Hi everybody, welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to make three easy mixed media cards all using Tim Holtz collage paper. So this one, I think it's called Typeset, I've used and I love using. You can rip it up, different strips, put it down on a background, and I love what it adds to an art journal page or mixed media project. But this one is called Botanical. And I chose it because it has these lovely florals, but they're larger scale. And so I find if I put them on there and they're not the focal point, I don't really like them in the background. And so they've sat in my stash completely unused and I've struggled until today. I was watching an unrelated video and I had an aha moment. This strip measures six inches across, up and down. And so I thought I could use this as a focal point and background on a six by six folded card, which I love making. I love that size so much that I made this DIY art journal, also six by six. So I started playing around in my studio. I grabbed out my six by six template. This is just mixed media paper that I cut a six by six opening in. And as I move it up and down on the collage paper, I can see what images I can get and I can choose an interesting combination. I like black and white images on my cards on my, in my art journal. So why don't I use that? Now, of course, uh, this works also for smaller scales, three by five, four by four. This is a four by four coaster template. You could get some lovely ones and do similar kind of effects that I'm going to be showing you on a coaster or a fridge magnet that also measure four by four. This is a five by seven. I've got five by seven cards and I will be making one of them. So th again, the template allows me to see and select what parts of this collage paper I am going to use. So I'm just finalizing my choice on here. and just marking very lightly a mark on either side. Now I'm going to cut on, give myself a little bit of excess on each side. If some of you are eagle eyes and part of my, have been watching my channels, I haven't suddenly switched hand dominance. I've had some video editing issues and so some of this is in reverse but it doesn't affect the content. So now that the 6x6 is cut out with a little bit to spare I'm grabbing this this is um, folded card from the crafters workshop they come in this 6x6 and they are mixed media paper and I love using them. They stand up to the stuff that I typically throw at my art journals. I'm just making sure that it fits. And then I'm grabbing a working sleeve. This is just a pocket that I made by folding paper over. And I can just flip the, put the card in there. And that keeps the back side of the card neat and tidy and prevents me from getting all sorts of things on it because, you know, I am not a neat crafter. So now I'm going to use Liquitex matte medium to glue or decoupage this down on the entire surface. I'm getting every little last bit out of this bottle. We don't want to waste anything. I'm using a generous amount of it and spreading it 
on there. I find with tissue paper that having a healthy amount of the matte medium works best. You can use um, Mod Podge or whatever decoupage material you have. I'm just lining it up, making sure my card is completely covered and pressing it down. I'm going to use a piece of saran wrap. Now I don't have any matte medium on the top yet, but I will. I'm going to double, triple check, make sure I get all the corners and all the edges. I don't want this lifting up on the card. And you want to spend the extra time to make sure that you've got it perfectly adhered, both at this stage and later. So once that's done, I'm just going to put a good coat of the fluid matte medium on top. Alternatively, you can put a coat of clear gesso, but we want to use one or the other to turn this surface into a non-porous surface. And that's going to be important because of what we're going to do in the next steps. Then I'm going to either let it dry or use my heat tool to dry this completely. So I'm going to do a five by seven card. Now the techniques that I'm going to use on each card and each surface are going to be different. So you are going to want to watch all three and then you can decide which of those techniques you like, which effect you like. So I put this one in a sleeve. Now I am going to colorize the background. In the first card, I left the card completely white, whatever color it was, off-white, white, what have you, and I put it on. This one I'm going to colorize, and I'm going to use a combination of alizarin crimson, I think that is, and Naples yellow with some white gesso. And I'm just going to blend it on the card, right on the card, wet and wet, and I because I know I'm going to get this blended color. Some of it's going to be more yellow, some is going to be more peachy, coral tones. And I want that variation. I want an interesting background. So as I'm doing this, I'm experimenting a little bit and bringing you along. I've not done this before, so I'm not exactly sure at this stage how this is going to work. I have an idea, but sometimes ideas don't work out. And then I want to make sure that that is completely dry. So while that is drying, I am going to cut the Tim Holtz collage paper from the botanical roll to a five by seven size. That's the size of my card. If you have a four by six card, you're gonna use that. I'm just going to clean up a little bit. in an attempt to keep things neat for my cards. And I'm going to unroll this a little bit and seek out using my template, window template, what looks good. So I'm basically playing with the composition. And I'm using the Tim Holtz paper on both of these cards pretty much as is. I'm just selecting what I like. Then I'm just marking it and I will cut out giving myself a little bit of excess. Now the little pits that I cut off that strip, don't throw those out because they can be glued onto a page and just become a element in the background. Or they'd be great with ATCs or smaller scale.
Now I'm going to do the exact same thing. I'm going to glue it down with fluid matte medium. Just line that up where I want it. And here I'm using the brayer to press it down and that really worked. But again, it's key that you don't get matte medium on top because it's going to stick. So then I want to dry it and I cut off the excess. So here are my two cards. Now you can leave them pretty much as is. You could just do what I'm doing now. I'm shading or edging with black. And yes, I should have this in the sleeve. And I do go over this a couple times, drawing in between and building up the layers. Here I realize I should have it in the sleeve, so I'm correcting my, my uh, thing. As I said, you can call this done. They look perfectly lovely with the background color or with the white as they are. But what's the fun in that? Now you could take that take that Tim Holtz paper, glue it onto white or colored or painted copy paper or not copy paper cardstock, and then glue that onto the card base, leaving a border. I like the border, or using different colors, but I'm not a card maker that way, and I don't have those supplies. So, and here I'm edging the white one a little bit more. So there are my two cards. So now I want to add some color to these and I'm using my ink tense blocks. Now these are ink that when you activate them with water, you have ink, but when it's dry, it is permanent. It's not going to reactivate if you put wet medium on it afterwards. And I am just painting elements of my card on here. Now I could choose to just do that bottom flower and I thought about that. I do go on and I paint the whole thing. I paint all the elements. That's an option. But this looks good as it is. So you see... You can make multi-makes using the Tim Holtz paper. Everything could be different. I swatch out the colors of my ink tense blocks and I'm just using multiple greens and multiple uh, pink pinks. And I build up the color over time. Put it on, let it dry, add another layer and you build up the depth of color. I love using my ink tense blocks. They're quick and easy. Here I'm adding some orange and some yellows to it, just making some lovely colors on here. This is why you wanted to put a good coat of matte medium or clear gesso on this so that it doesn't just bleed into the tissue paper. You're colorizing it on top. So I paint this one yellow initially and I think okay that looks good and I'm just picking the colors activating it with water painting over it once twice three times building up the level of intensity of the color you can do this with thinned acrylic paints again make sure that the surface is fully covered with matte medium or clear gesso And you're going to want to thin your paints and select colors that are more translucent than the opaque ones because the opaque ones are going to mask or cover up any of the black lines and shading that come with the paper that I'm counting on. That's built in shading so that makes this so quick and easy.
the ink tents blocks they now have pan colors that look like watercolors but they're the ink tents blocks and they come in there's a couple different sets if they had had that when i bought mine five six years ago i would have totally bought the panned ones and i'll link that in my amazon store to the ink tents blocks they are you know more money initially but shop around for sales and check out my video playlist of uses of the Inktense blocks in mixed media because they are very, very versatile. You can stamp with them, turn, make a sprays out of them, paint with them as you're doing here. They can be backgrounds and I love them because they're permanent. And I've had this set for six years, so they last. They're good quality. So I'm painting the daisy. I've painted that flower, the other flower down there. I painted it kind of cornflower blue because I realized it is, I think, a cornflower. And I've picked colors. I've got the primary colors, red, blue, and green. I mean, <laughs> yellow, red, and blue. I'm absolutely loving how this has come together. And thrilled to find a way to use this botanical papers. Now I'm just shading with my angle brush and some black acrylic paint, just adding a little bit more interest and detail to my focal images. But really, using the collage papers, how easy is this? Everything was there, I just have to paint in. I don't have to stamp, I don't have to do anything. Bring some of that red up into the daisy and drying it and building up the color. The reason you wanna put matte medium on there, and I think I missed that part, if I wanted to if I put, oh, there, I decided I wanted to erase it so I can just take a wet cloth and take it back down and repaint. Now I'm just splattering with some gold. And then I decide to make a pool and splatter with the ink tents block, that same red color. I looked through my sentiment packs and I found a sentiment in my short and sweet sentiment pack. And I'm going to put that on. But I decided I want the flowers to be glossy. So I'm using my gloss varnish from Liquitex and just putting it on the flowers, not on the background. And this is just making, giving it a little extra shine and making it stand out all the more. And I do that to all the flowers, but again, I could have selectively done it to just one. Then I'm going to glue that sentiment down from my short and sweet sentiment pack and the white doesn't show up so well so i'm going to use the ones where it's a black background with white letters i think it shows up well with this light background and once that's completely dry i'm going to outline the card with my black posca pen you want to make sure that it's completely dry and cool or you tend to clog up kill your liner pens and the like. I love it. So here I'm just starting by outlining with black around this card. I could leave it as it is, just put a sentiment on, but we're going to tweak it. So depending on the color that you put in the background, here I'm just going to use that same color scheme and I'm painting this, I believe it's Merlot color or Shiraz. I knew it was a wine. 
and I'm just building up the colors. I also mix some other colors in there. But because there's all that line work and shading in the tissue paper, this makes it super simple. I don't have to do that work. So again, I could have done just the one flower or I can paint out all of them. And that depends on the color. If my background was blue, that may not have worked as well. If you've watched other videos, often with napkins and different things, I overpaint using gesso first. I think that would work as well, but I'm not doing that in this video. The background is very soft and watercolorly, not so strong, which allows me to colorize these without competing. This I didn't like, so again, I'm wiping it off with the white with the wet cloth. And I'm just going to change it up a little bit. Instead of yellow, I'm going more orange and coral. Then I paint a little bit of green on the leaves. They don't have a lot. They're very dark, but they're, they're in close up. In real life, you can see. And then I picked another sentiment from my sentiment pack. This one, I actually had blew it up, made it bigger on my printer. I'm just gonna cut this apart and glue that Live Inspired. I like putting sentiments that are kind of make it all purpose cards so it's not necessarily limited to one season or event. Doing that down with matte medium. And I'm adding a little bit of shading and a little bit of highlighting, but you don't have to. So the first card we did, we glued it down onto a white background. This one we colorized it and both work. Here I'm just adding some highlights. and outlining the sentiment with my Posca pen. And this time I chose to splatter with white. I do come back and splatter, I think, with gold as well. Now, what if you don't want to cover the whole thing with the surface? Or what if you want to use some of those little bits? Well, that's what I'm going to do. So I grabbed, actually, this is six by six. It's from my art journal, not a card, but it could be the front of a card. Now I'm going to get rid of some of this excess tissue paper because I don't want to see those hard edges. And water cutting, it is the best way I know to get rid of them. However, if you water cut with napkins, you use less water on napkins. You need more for tissue paper and I use a wider brush it just seems to work and I give it a little bit of time before I pull it off and I'm just editing out elements that I want but I'm going to keep those those will end up on a page they'll add a detail somewhere I just put it in a big bin of 
collage items that every once in a while I go through. I'm just going to cut off this other leaf. And arrange it. Now the background here was pre-done. And it is light blue and there's some script stamp on it. And I'm thinking that'll work well. So this basically I've just harvested a and made a focal image for this. Going down the leaves first and then the flower. You could do put these and glue them onto ceramic blocks if that's what you decoupage and then color them with your intense blocks. So just think of all the things you can use. So I'm loving the black and white on the light blue background. But, you know, I want a little more color in the background. So I thought, I've got my intense blocks out. I'm just using a teal color here. I'm going to make a pool of color and add more color. I've decided that this one, I'm going to keep the flower, keep the collage paper black and white. I'm not going to colorize it. I am going to only colorize the background. And for that, I want an interesting color. And so then I decide, yeah, I want an interesting color. I'm going to mix some colors. So I'm putting in some light green with the teal and blending it. I'm getting it. A I want to add a little bit of water because I'm going to attempt to do the saran wrap technique. Well, I'm not going to. Attempt. I do successfully. And I want some variation in here. This six by six I cut from my nine by twelve mix Canson mixed media. It's made out of that paper. I'll put a link to the video where I show that. If you're interested, you can check it out. So while this is still wet, I'm grabbing a piece of saran wrap and wrinkling it in there. This is going to give some interesting patterning to the background. Now, once it's dry, I, and I set it aside and let it dry naturally, I decide I could put a dragonfly on it. I'm just going to put a sentiment. This is from my Simplify sentiment pack which was, I think, my word for 2022. And you can see the wonderful effect that the saran wrap technique gave to this background. Just gluing down the sentiment. I've bubble cut it. And giving it a dry. Just adding a few sketchy lines in here that got cut off or ripped off when I water cut. And now I'm edging it. Adding that black, it just frames the page. loving the black and white. It's very soft color. There's a very light blue behind it. I found some butterflies that I harvested from a napkin and I glued those down in a contrasting color. So I did add color and then I splatter it with, I believe I splatter it with gold. So there we have the three finished products. This one, white background, and I added gloss medium to make the flowers stand out and be shiny. This one, we colorized the background and then glued the collage paper onto. And this one, we left the image black and white, 
put it on a colorized background, tweaked the background color, and added some other elements. So that one is actually not a card. It goes back into my DIY signature here, my 6x6. So I'm just going to put it back into this journal. I love that you can pull them out and work flat. And there we have it. Thank you so much for joining me. I hope you learned something new today. And I hope you'll give this a try. If you've got some of this collage paper in your stash and you haven't been using it, get it out. Let's use up what we have in our stash. Until next time, go get creative.